I'm here to talk about using the uh, config transpiler for container Linux. My name is Derek Gagno. Um, and I guess I'll just get into this. Um, yeah, so uh, when I used, used to give talks, um, I, I was on the Rocket team for a long time, and I would introduce myself as a rocket scientist. Um, however, I'm not on the Rocket team. I now work on a thing called Ignition, which I'll be explaining later. So I, I guess my new software title, I can say I'm a software arsonist. Um, yeah, so just a quick bio on myself. Um, I've been at CoreOS for about uh, one and a half years. I've worked on Rocket for most of that time, and about a couple months ago, something like that, switched to the platform team. This is the team responsible for maintaining the uh, container Linux uh, distribution, which is like a Linux distribution that CoreOS uh, has and maintains. Um, I went to the Rochester Institute of Technology in upstate New York, graduated a few months ago, and I'm based in San Francisco. I'm just visiting here for six weeks. Uh, I'm at the tail end of it, I actually leave this weekend. Uh, yeah, so jumping into it, um, let's talk about provisioning. Um, our ideal is that when a container Linux machine comes online, like for the first time, when it first like is booted and like is created, uh, when it comes up, it'll receive a configuration file. You know, tell it that this is what you are, this is what you do. So like here's systemd units you're supposed to run, this is how you configure your network, these are users that you know you should have existing in your system with settings and so on. And for forever the way we've done this is via cloud configs. What this is, it's a YAML file that you write it has a pretty like sane schema. You know, you can write things like the systemd units you want to have and all the things you want your machine to do. Um, and we've supported this for basically forever. Uh, there was a project called uh, Cloudinit that we forked. So we have Cloudinit that runs inside the image and the cloud config is what you give to Cloudinit to boot. It's how the terminology there works. And we added in namespaced uh, container Linux specifics. So, you, you know, you can use the normal, uh, like a normal Cloudinit like cloud config file, um, like from upstream, and then you just add in like a core OS section that says, oh yeah, please turn on SCD or something like that. So let's talk a little bit how it works. Uh, it takes a YAML file, uh, it's just a pretty like easy thing for humans to write. Uh, it runs as a systemd unit in every boot, so when the machine come, uh, boots, uh, whenever it boots, uh, you know, not just the first time, there's the systemd unit that runs, it ingests this YAML file, figures out what it needs to do and does it. And you can tweak the YAML file and reboot the machine to get it to run again. Um, if, for example, you want to make changes or like, you know, tweak your config, you can do that. Um, so just as an example, uh, let's, let's see here. This is where I figured out how to use my laptop again. There we go. Okay, let's make this bigger. Um, yeah. So here's just an example uh, cloud config file. Uh, it's a cloud config. It says to use etcd2, provides us some options for it, um, like what's its name, some like URLs it's supposed it needs. And then under the units section, it says the etcd2, the etcd2 service, like systemd unit should be started. Uh, so if let's just uh, boot a machine with this and see, you know, just to demonstrate that this all works. Um, Sorry, I should have run some of this initialization stuff first. So if you'll just bear with me for a moment. Okay, so I've got that same file in here. Uh, that's the cloud config that you just saw. Make this bigger. Um, and now if I run it. Um, so I'm gonna start up a QEMU VM and just hand it that cloud config file. Uh, so this is that VM, it boots. If we log in. Should be able to etcdctl, cluster health, and we can see that etcd is running, got a healthy result from you know, the one node we have on this machine. It was configured just to be a one node instance. Um, and if we ask system uh, cuddle to tell us what the etcd2 service looks like, uh, you can see that there's a drop-in file here towards the bottom that was added that specifies all of the configuration options that uh, we you know, told Cloud Cloudnet to configure for it. So, seems fine. What's the problem with this? Um, so it runs notably after a machine is booted. This is after the kernel is booted, SystemD has come up, done some things already, configured the network, then it starts Cloudnet. By this point in time, all the disks have been formatted, all the disks have been mounted, and you know, all this stuff. So you can't really do anything with the disks, for example, if you want to 
you know, maybe reformat one of your drives um, or mount things in a different spot, and then that's already happened by this point in time, so you can't really manipulate that. Um, and it runs after the networking has been brought up. So for example, if you wanna configure a static uh, IP address for your machine, by the point in time CloudNet runs, it's already tr attempted to grab a DHCP lease. So that's a little like too late in the process to super manipulate that. You know, you can always drop the lease and configure a static IP address. Again, it's pretty messy. Um, and it's not an immutable model. It encourages people to make tweaks and constantly be rebooting their machines to like apply, you know, successive changes, which is much harder to predict how, you know, it's gonna behave and how these things work. Um, because, you know, you can get in like weird states as it reboots and CloudNet tries to rectify the changes that you want each time. So we made a new tool and, uh, you know, in an attempt to solve this problem, and it's called Ignition. So Ignition runs in the init RAMFS. So when a, a Linux machine is booting, um, there's this stage in the boot process before like your init system or PID1 or the disks have been mounted or anything of that like starts. Um, so this is pretty much like right after, like this is immediately after like Grub or whatever, you know, boot manager you have. Um, and so Ignition runs in this stage and this is bef uh, again bef before like the, the disks or anything have been mounted. Uh, and it only runs on the first boot. So the first time machine comes up, it'll grab its ignition config, and before like the actual system gets going, it can manipulate the disks, inject files, do whatever it needs to do. Um, and it has uh, JSON as input, and I'll be explaining more on this, like why and how this works later. Um, and there's no container Linux specifics in this schema. Um, so for example, instead of saying, yes, please turn on etcd and here's the arguments, you need to be like, here's a systemd drop-in for the etcd-member service with you know, the options that I need. And again, I'll get more on why uh, we remove that in a moment. Um, so here's an example. Hopefully it's big enough. Um, this is a systemd drop-in file, which specifies uh, the same arguments for etcd that we saw last time, except this is set up for etcd3, just, just de de uh, implementation details, so ignore that. Um, yeah, so this should configure the same etcd thing, uh, instance that we just had running. Um, however, because this is going into a JSON file, we need to JSON string escape this and then put it in that actual thing. And this is what that looks like. Um, yeah, it's a mess. Um, so, oh yeah, let, let, uh, let's just boot a machine with this just to show that works. Um, excuse me, I'll kill that last machine and make a new image. Okay, so I've got that uh, same file. It should be, uh, yeah. So that, this is that ignition file that you just saw on the slide. And should be able to boot machine with this. Machine boots. hopefully boots. There we go. And if I can type my password correctly, should be able to get in here. And so let's let's first look at the, uh, again, this is a different unit than last time because it's SCD3 now. Um, so down on the bottom, you can see there's uh, the same drop and file, uh, very similar to what we saw before, if not the same thing. And I don't know how fast the uh, internet is here, so I don't know if this is running yet. Um, yeah, so it started at CD, so it's running and successful, and we should be able to SD cluster health. SD, SD is running. Okay. So. Uh, again, your pr probable reaction is, Derek, this sucks, because look at that file, who wants to write that? Um, so here's a premise, or like a claim I'll, I'll make. You shouldn't care what an ignition config like is or how they work. Um, the reason being, uh, we made the container links config transpiler, and that's an awful name for a project because it's too long, so we're gonna shorten it to config transpiler, and CT for short. Um, so the idea is this is a YAML to JSON transpiler, so you can still write a nice YAML file like what we had in cloud configs, It'll convert it into JSON that we can hand to a booting machine, and this is again why you shouldn't really care what the schema of the JSON is or like write it by hand or anything like that. 
Um, this is a standalone tool, so it's not in the boot process, which means we can do validation and verification before it boots. Because if you typoed your ignition config or your, your cloud config and try to boot a machine with it, the machine will, machine will try to boot, and it'll fail at some point. Maybe SSH keys won't get in there. You won't be, even be able to log into it and see what went wrong. Um, whereas with this model, now we're do, because we're doing this conversion outside of the boot process, you can you know, just immediately in, on your laptop see immediately like, what the problems are without needing to like, try to go dig through the like, logs of a machine that failed to boot. Um, and the config transpiler understands container Linux specifics. So in the config transpiler, you can say, yes, please turn on etcd for me. And it'll, it knows how to generate the right systemd unit to you know, turn on what, how to provide settings to it. Um, so here's an example. This is the same, same example we've been using so far. This boots uh, etcd with uh, the config transpiler. And I never updated this slide, so some of these options aren't quite right. Uh, pretend there wasn't discovery and there was an initial cluster and a name setting, but probably none of you are looking closely enough at the slides to notice that. Um, but yeah, so you can just specify an etcd section, some stuff, and boot that. So again, benefits, validation before boot. Um, you can also have uh, different transpilers. So one of the reasons we kept t container Linux specifics outside of Ignition is because we want to keep the project available for other distros to use because we think it's a very like, useful thing that, you know, with uh, how it fits into the boot process, it's kind of a novel concept and we don't really, we're not aware of other projects that have done that yet. Um, so the hope is if like Red Hat wanted to put Ignition in their distro, they could do that and then make their own transpiler with their own like OS specifics. You know, so if they want to like add an OpenShift stuff, they could do that in their transpiler. And then we can figure it down to the same schema and spec that Ignition takes. Um, also because it produces uh, JSON, while I claim you shouldn't really have to look at it, um, if you want to inspect it and see what is going on, exactly what your machine is doing, you can still look at it and manipulate it. Um, okay, so uh, because this is an example heavy thing, let's go back to, um, where are we? Yeah, so here's um, that same, uh, here's a correct version of that container Linux config that I had up on the slide. Um, so CT is command line utility. Uh, CT tech tech help. Um, so if we do, we specify as the input file uh, that container Linux config. Gives us JSON blob and Make it pretty if you want to, or pretty printed if you want uh, human readable formatting. Um, okay, so let's go back to that VM. And I'm rebuilding the image each time because uh, Ignition only runs on first boot, so I want a clean image that hasn't been booted yet. Um, doesn't doesn't take long, so. Yeah, so here's that same uh, output from CT I just showed you. And we should be able to boot a machine with this. Okay, and same, same stuff, just to be consistent, I suppose, at this, at this point. We got etcd member, we have the same uh, drop-in. Um, it notably provided the arguments in a different fashion than we would have, or than, than we did in the prior example. In this case, it's using, uh, specifying actual uh, command line arguments instead of injecting the settings through environment variables. For etcd, it works the same either way. Um, the reason it's doing here is for a trick uh, that I'm gonna show you after this, um, you know, where, where I'm going with this whole thing. Um, and if we look, status etcd member, it's active, it's running, it's happy, it's successful, um, and started. Cluster health, cluster's healthy. Okay, so what if we could specify what cloud provider we're using ahead of time? Cloud providers typically have a metadata service that uh, VM can use to ask it information about itself. 
what's, what's, what IP address am I going to get if I do DHCP, stuff like that. Or, well, it's already on DHCP by that point. You get, you get the idea. Um, Chorus Metadata is a project we have that does this. Um, you start Chorus Metadata, um, Chorus Metadata via the image you've built figures out what cloud provider it's on. Um, and then it knows what, where it can go and find that metadata service and pull in some information about it, put it on the system. Um, and the idea is that uh, in a unit like etcd, you could uh, make a drop-in that says to source the file that uh, Chorus Metadata produces to have the environment variables, and then you could use those um, to like have dynamic data. So if you've looked at the example so far, I'm hard coding the IP address of the machine that's booting. Well, it doesn't work if you want to boot a lot of machines or even really like just knowing what the IP address ahead of time is, isn't always feasible. Um, so you can do this. So here's an example with dynamic data. Again, this um, example I never updated this slide, so some of the options aren't quite right. But uh, you can see inside of curly braces, it has all caps, uh, public IPv4. So it can uh, reference data that it won't know until the machine boots. Um, and so if we take this and run it through, um, Uh, CT. Yeah, so here's the same thing. Um, it's got etcd with the set, uh, proper settings this time, and also, I'm also notably adding my SSH key, uh, the, the public key, because I'm going to boot this on Amazon, um, and I need a way to be able to SSH into the machine. Um, you know, because I can't do this in local queue UVM because there's no metadata service for they can ask for information about itself. So if I CT in file, CD member, dynamic data, it'll give me an error uh, saying the platform must be specified. Um, so unlike in prior times when I ran this, I need to actually say um, uh, platform EC2. Now it produces a Bigger blob, again, it's longer just because the SSH key is in there. Um, so if we hop over to Amazon, um, this is a, just a screen to create a new image. So we go to the AWS Marketplace, find Core OS, uh, Container Linux. A tiny, tiny image. And if you uh, specify under advanced details uh, in the configure instance section, uh, you can provide uh, user data. This is where you put in that ignition config. Um, so if we go back to the ignition config, paste it into here, and launch the machine. Hmm? Oh, that'd be bad. Hmm? Oh, um, that's printed by my shell because there was no ah, new line at the end of the file. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I don't want that because I'd make it invalid ah, JSON. Okay, okay. Good catch, though. Sorry, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's much better for you to point that out because if I blew this without it, it would waste a lot of time. Um, I notably don't need to uh, have Amazon inject the key pair for me because I included my um, public SSH key in the ignition config. Uh, it'll boot the image. The image will come online. And we'll SSH in and take a look at what happened. And that's at the key for the core user. Um, I need to try this a few times until the machine's actually online. Oh, hey. Okay, and now I'm on the machine in Amazon. So let's look at the it's the member service. Um, and so here is the drop that was generated this time. So note, uh, there's actually a unit section um, for this. Uh, where's my mouse? There's a unit section that says it requires uh, chorus metadata and should run after it. Um, and then in the environment file, uh, there's an environment file line that sources uh, the run metadata chorus um, file. And then this is the reason why CT uses uh, command line arguments instead of environment variables, because uh, in uh, systemd units, uh, you can't do an, an variable substitution like this in environment variables. Um, so now it's using the uh, core CC2 uh, IPv4 local like environment variable that comes from core metadata to get that 
And just for fun, let's look at this file. Um, so yeah, here's all the information that Chorus Metadata was able to pull about uh, the current running instance. Um, Okay, CD Cuddle Cluster Health, uh, same member is online and running. Um, yeah, and so that's the tooling that we built uh, for um, like how you, how you configure machines. And so I, I've, uh, we're currently in the stage where we've uh, got a couple of releases out. CT is uh, 022 as the latest release. And we've uh, um, rewritten all of the uh, public facing docs to uh, explain how to use this tool and uh, show off this instead of ignition or cloud config. And that'll be going live hopefully in the next few days, next week, something like that. Uh, it's been written, it's just when, when it gets actually gets synced to the site, is, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so obligatory we're hiring slide. Um, yeah, uh, anyone have any questions? Yeah. What made you choose JSON in the first place? I mean, um, I find that it's more than just the choice of finding the validation, but why JSON? <laughs> so um, there's uh, this initial, uh, we have two choices. We could choose a human readable, inspectable form that you know someone could look at, or we could choose a like only like binary, like you use a human can't look at it uh, form. Um, and we opted for the former so that you know power users can actually look and inspect and see what's going on. Um, but we also, I guess, had the option of going the other direction and why not use YAML, like you know Cloud Config was using initially. And our, the hope there is that we want to keep um, the like complex uh, YAML parser out of the boot process because um, YAML itself is a pretty complicated spec and can do a lot of things. And so from a security standpoint, maybe there's a vulnerability in the YAML parser. Um, just from another standpoint, they're complex. What if, it, you know, what if there's an error somewhere? What if it fails? Um, so we wanted to keep the, the tooling in the critical boot path a little simpler. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, schema for ignition or CT? Uh, yeah, this is the ignition repo. If you just go to the doc directory, uh, this is also on the chorus.com slash docs website. Uh, it, this is where it gets, where it pulls from. So this is the uh, latest version of the schema. Um, no, I don't have it in an easy to read JSON file. I wish I did. Um, yes, these, these are all, so, some of the sections that it can do. Um, uh, it has a neat uh, config append thing. So if like, for example, you're making a VM in, in an environment, your system administrator says, you need to include these things in your config. The system administrator can like make a config with like the right drop-ins that every machine should have, and then whenever anyone writes them, they can just append the so, like system administrator's config, which is kind of neat. Um, you can uh, manipulate disks. Uh, you can create partitions, specify what size they should have, what label they should have. You can set up uh, RAID devices. So if you want to have you know your container Linux machine have a like a RAID thing, you can uh, format that and set that up uh, in first boot with this. Uh, create file systems. You can uh, inject files themselves. Um, you can even specify like URLs of where it should fetch, fi fetch files from and like caches that they should match. Um, modes, users on the files, things that you expect. Uh, system D units, whether or not to enable them, whether or not to mask them, contents, drop-ins. Uh, network D units, uh, also all a, a long list of like user create options, like shell and home directory and so on. Yes. Does it still have some service on the end if it's running as a reboot or are we completely get rid of it? Um, I think it's still there if people want to use it because there's no people that rely on it. Um, it's just, you know, if there's no cloud config file, it's a no-op. Um, and I think in the long term, we do want to eventually get, like, get rid of it and remove it from the OS. Um, it's just that this stuff is new enough where there's too many people that rely on it where we can't do that now. Any other questions? Cool, thanks everyone.